So let me tell you this story. So, you know, if you've been watching any of these, then you probably know that, you know, I'm an artist and I don't, you know, ostensibly seem to make very much money at it. It's been that way for a long time. And I've had people call me a faggot. I've had, I told people, like, you know, I have over a million and a half, two million views all together in all the different places I have these photos and thinking on responses, but you haven't made it pay. And, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's sort of like, you know, Leonardo da Vinci does The Last Supper. And then he turns around and there's a Hollywood agent saying, so how can we make it pay, Leonardo? You know, or like Michelangelo does the Sistine Chapel. And don't get me wrong, I mean, Michelangelo was paid, but he was also commissioned by the Pope, all right? I suppose we nearly had a nervous breakdown when, they, when he heard what they wanted him to do. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm just sort of saying that, you know, um, some things are beyond measurement and currency. I mean, that's why we, we don't like prostitution, right? And some things, you know, like there are some accomplishments and some undertakings that human beings can undertake that can't be measured in currency, right? There are some contributions that we can't pay for in coinage, okay? I mean, it's just to deny a whole swath of human existence to say that everything has a price, okay? I mean... And I'm not saying, you know, I'm not against, you know, um, currency or charging because it has, it has definite advantages, very practical advantages. It gives you a degree of freedom because you don't actually have to convince people to do what you would like them to do. You, you can just pay them. But on the other hand, people will do anything because they don't need to be convinced of what the right or wrong of what they're doing because you're just paying them. It's a double-edged sword. <clears throat> But when it comes to art, if you really want to create art, then you can't think about getting paid. Because once you start thinking about getting paid, that colors the art. Because what is art? Well, you know, you might have seen my video about art for artists versus craftsmen. Okay, I don't want to sound pedantic here. But the difference is, is that, you know, when the artist starts most of the time, he doesn't know how it's going to be finished. All right, when a, when, a, when, a, when a craftsman starts, he knows exactly how it's going to be finished. And it's, you know, there's a blurred line, and you can get really deep about it, because a lot of being, you know, an artist is how the viewer recreates their perception of your art. So, for example, if I show you a picture of Jesus on the cross, and you're from the depths of China and never heard of Catholicism, it's going to look like a pretty silly painting to you. So, what I'm trying to say is, is that, you know, with my work as an artist, I can't think about getting paid. I can't think about paying anyone, and I can't think about selling it. You want to know why? Because any one of those things would ruin my art. Imagine! Wow, look what God's done again. But seriously, I mean, if you want to talk about my rebellion and why it is I'm not just a happy-go-lucky worker bee with all the rest of the bees, and believe me, I, it's very appealing sometimes, except that I could never do it. It's just that, you know, yes, it is possible to have an undertaking that can't be measured in currency, and no, that person doesn't deserve to just starve in the streets because it or live an aesthetic, minimized, trivialized existence, okay? It's a very tough conundrum, I admit it, but it's only tough because of how we frame things to begin with. There used to be wise men and, and spiritual men in India, for example, and the people just gave them a bowl of food when they wandered through. They weren't considered beggars, they were considered holy men. But what that means today is a very interesting question. It's very difficult to just, you know, sleep by the curbside, you know, with all the cars and the gangbangers, and especially the cops, and all the people in all the houses are going to call sanitation on you. 
that's very difficult to be a holy person. It doesn't pay to be a holy person unless you want to join an organization that's worked hard, very hard, to establish a reputation for being holy, which in and of itself should make you suspicious. You know, that doesn't call for spontaneity, okay? There are human beings who can spontaneously create meaning, and because it isn't in a system and it isn't recognized, it doesn't have an establishment, a facade, and an edifice, well, no one can recognize it because, after all, how can they get a grip on it? They can't get a grip on it because there's no way to measure it in coinage. And if you can't measure something in coinage, it might as well not exist. So what's happening in these dark corners where no one's looking? Hi! And so you see, that makes it very difficult to like be an artist and say, okay, I'm going to work with this person to capture their soul, but in order to do that, I'm going to pay them $500 first. And then I'm going to take all the rights to the pictures and I'm going to sell them to a major magazine so that they can do whatever they want in post-production to that photo to make it the exact opposite of whatever I did and then use it to sell panties. That's not what I consider to be an art. And what's more, I don't feel like I can maintain my integrity as an artist letting that happen. But as near as I can tell, that's the only way I could ever hope to profit in photography. Unless I want to start taking pictures of, you know, and they, by the way, they I've tried and they've never hired me, of those cute little roly-poly couples that are just every day who, you know, just want to have a nice picture of their wedding or whatever, or just want a nice picture of them as an engaged couple, and that's great. But they're not, they can't, they can't hack it with me, okay? I mean, they don't understand that there's an existence beyond where they are, or certainly that there's an existence on camera, just like an actor or a model has an instinctive knowledge that there's another existence with the lens and the camera, okay? They know it, they can reach for it, they can become something else. But normal people, for better or for worse, are just are really, they're, they're intimidated by it, and I can understand that, okay? And I, I don't mean this is a diss at all, I'm just saying that most of the time, just your average run-of-the-mill person does, isn't ready or isn't up to the desire to want to have me photograph them. I mean, it'd be nice if it was true, but just for me, it doesn't seem to be that way. So I end up working a lot of times with these young people who've just come into L.A. who have all the hopes and dreams and stars in their eyes, who think, that, you know, who will get a leg up by working with me because my work is really good and I will get them at least to the next level of person who will maybe take pictures of them and then go up to the next level and the next level because that's just the way it is. And you know, that's the way it is. But you know, they do get something in exchange for working with me, but I don't pay them. It's all a trade for portfolio thing. And in exchange, because I didn't pay them, I don't use those photos and I don't try to sell them and I don't try to market them and I don't try to put them in the calendars and I don't try to put them into magazines. I don't submit them to magazines. I've worked on magazines. I've been an editor-in-chief of magazines. I know what they do on magazines, okay? If you, once you give it over, you're not having any control over that photo anymore and the way it's laid out can make all the difference in what that photo said. So, you know, you're in this, like, terrible position where basically, like, you know, what happens when you work for the trade for portfolio, what you get is actually the real person. You want to know why? Because they're not getting paid. And because, you see, and because they've come and they're hoping to start their whole future, they give it their all. And they're open. And they're creative and they're artistic and they're willing to take a risk. And they're willing to do it. They've already come 9,000 miles and left everything they've known. And so, yeah, what you would get is the best of people. You get one of the best of these people. They give it, you know, they could be any temperament or any walk of life. And, and, and you know, and in that moment, there's something truthful about it. And in that moment, you can actually take pictures of who they are and what they want and what they dream of. And maybe, you know, many times it might, they might be very young and it might not be, you know, all that deep and... They don't, you know, most of them come from, you know, mom and dad places and they own their wardrobe has become Target, you know, and their, and their hair was done that morning with a brush and a girlfriend or a boyfriend or something. And I can't tell you how many times I've taken these awe-inspiring pictures to me that really just seem to nail it, okay, both, you know, visually, compositionally, and showing the person. I've had people come to me saying, look what this person is wearing. How could we ever take this person seriously? Will you, will you ever think about getting him any wardrobe, any real wardrobe? You know, do you ever think about, you know, maybe getting someone who is a little better, you know, a little better looking maybe, you know, or 
you know, and I hear that over and over and over again. I've had one person I work with for forever who just would regularly, every conversation I have, it's been 15 minutes about that, till I finally just stopped interacting with that person. You know, and... <clears throat> You know, that's great. And so, like, you know, I'm just saying that, you know, to sort of wrap this up, that, you know, really, if you know, having this choice, like, would I rather, you know, be taking, you know, paying people, you know, to really, you know, take photos and then, you know, you know, I mean, I could take all these photos I've done for TFP and publish them, you know, but I won't because I don't think that's fair to the model because they never got any, any, any payment for their work. So I just keep it all for free. And that way no one can ever accuse me of having cheated anyone else, not even myself. But that means that there's not a lot of money coming in. And so what do I do? Well, I can make a choice. Well, I could sell out or I could keep doing what I'm doing. And I've been choosing to keep doing what I'm doing. Just, you know, that's how the train runs out of track, I guess. Because that's what I think the right thing to do is. But anyway, let me just wrap this up with a story. We like stories. So I was riding with Uber, paradoxically from uh, Sammy's, the best camera store in the world, as far as I know, over in Los Angeles, because they cleaned all my equipment for me for a nominal fee. I love those guys. And so I got Uber to come, you know, trek me back as we're riding along. You know, we, this, this, this young lady gets in the back and it turns out that she's a model. Mm. And she does artistic nudes. I mean, I, don't, I didn't ask her. She volunteered this. And so that's when I turned around and said, well, hey, I'm a photographer, you know. And so then we started going back and forth. And she said, well, you know, it's just such a drag because, you know, I get, I pay like, you know, I get paid a hundred bucks an hour. But, you know... Either they, most of them, I don't know, I think they're just creepy guys who just want to photograph someone new because they never look like they really know what they're doing. And then the rest of them, they say it's just for their private collection because I hear that a lot, but then I never see them. And I get to wake up in the middle of the night sometimes wondering, what are they doing with these photos of me? But, you know, whatever. And I said, well, I, I can see that, but, you know, I'm more like an artistic photographer and I try to, like, you know, capture portraits and, you know... You know, I don't usually publish this stuff except maybe like online portfolio stuff. And you can always track it and all this stuff. But, you know, I mean, you know, maybe we could do some work together because I like to try to go from just artistic, you know, standpoint. Oh, yeah, I remember that when I was in college, I wanted to be an artist. I went to college to be an actress. <clears throat> I said, oh, well, well, then tell you what, why, why don't we get together and I'll, I'll we'll set up this agreement where I'll take pictures I won't sell them or anything. I'll just use them for my portfolio. And then you can have, you know, grade A pictures with, you know, here I got all this professional equipment, you know. And you can take those photos and you can actually would have good photos to show on your ports and that would lead to more business. She says, wow. I said, here, look at my portfolio on your phone. And she says, well, you know, okay, well, why don't we give, a, you know, give me a call or something. So then I'm like, okay, fine. So then like a couple days later, I give her a call, and, you know. She says, okay, it'd be 100 bucks an hour. <laughs> And I said, oh. And so then, like, you know, I'm thinking about this for a moment, and I'm just remembering, like, when she was in college, she wanted to be an artist. But apparently after we graduated, we learned that that was, a, that was just a stupid idea, you know? <laughs> Grew out of that one real quick, you know, sort of like, you know, a reptile shedding its skin or something. You know? Ooh, boy, that was an illusion back then. Woo, now I'm a new person. You know, and I was like, fudge. All right, so I said, well... You know, that's great, but, you know, I, I'm not, you know, I don't know. But I'll have to get back to you on that. And so then I was like, but I said, but don't you want pictures? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so I thought about this and thought about this. And I wasn't sure because, you see, I kind of liked her, which is always never a good idea if you're working with models, by the way. It's very easy and you don't want to do it. But then, you know, I'll get into that some other time. But I was like, you know, I kind of liked her and everything. I was like, shoot, I know I could do some great stuff. So then I try, I try one last time because as Jack Reacher says, nothing ventured, nothing gained. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you know, I got, you know, I got in touch with her again. I said because she was going to New York. She couldn't discuss it last time because she's going to New York for an audition or some such so anyway so she had gotten back and a couple of days had gone by and so I, I, I gave her a text and I said hi it's that guy from Uber again <laughs> and I you know I think we could do some really I really think that if we worked together we could get some signature distinctive photos would be unlike anything you had and that could be valuable to you and she said well how much um, how much did we agree to 
I said, well, you see, that's the thing. I don't, you know, I think that we could do an artistic exchange here and you would know exactly what was happening with the photos because you'd have them yourself. And she says, listen, it's early in the morning. I just got up. I'm listening to a podcast. I'm filling out a form for a, for egg donor donorship. And I'm eating and I'm really crabby right now. So I'll give you a call sometime later, okay? So I was looking at this and I'm thinking like she's filling out an egg donor form. And I just want to try to put this to you, okay? So I'm an artist here fighting for everything that's beautiful and trying to show people souls. And this girl who went to college to be an actress has actually moved to the point where she's actually selling her eggs. Wow! So, you know, I was just going to let that go, you know, so, you know, just slink away, you know, like I was supposed to at the mention of, like, you know, all these, you know, crabby female and her eggs that's supposed to make the guy, like, it's, it's basically code words, hit the door, Jack, you know, but I was like, you know, fuck this shit, I'm so tired of this shit. So I, was, I, just, I just texted her back, he said, you know, I truly believe that you, sh you and I having a shoot would be more conducive to you having a better life than anything you're doing this morning. And she says, how's that? I said, well, it would be something for you rather than something for them. And it's certainly better than commoditizing your body. And she said, is this shoot going to be worth $13,000? Because that's life-changing money. Now, just to put this on pause, you know, I got $20,000 early this, this year because someone tried to fuck me and I stood up for my rights. Okay. That's all gone now from just trying to live in the necessities of life because I didn't have anything else coming in while I tried to fight this. But I did, and that's what happened. And I got started as an artist because my grandfather, who wouldn't even acknowledge that I'd been born because my dad was Jewish, left my mom a big little, you know, little sum of money that was a lot more than $13,000. And she, being a mother who respected her and honored her family, turned around and gave me most of it so that I could start my dream. All right? So I know a lot about what money can do, okay? And I also know a lot about what money can't do. So I said to her, you know something? If I had to choose between doing that and being poor, I'd rather be poor. I am poor. And so now there's this silence, you know, for a few seconds. She says, well, I'll call you again and talk to you about a shoot. And, and, and I'm not poor. I, I have a savings account and an IRA. <clears throat> So then I just expected never to hear from her again, you know. But then guess what? I did hear from her again. And ostensibly someone said they were going to give me some money. So I actually might have like a few, you know, dollars that might tide me over for another few moments. And so like, you know, I'm she says, she says, hey, can I give you a call about a shoot? I'm like shocked. What? She wants to talk? What? So I said, sure. So I gave her a call. So now we're talking and she says, you know, I didn't do that egg donor thing because... Well, I called my mom, and it turns out that both she and three of her aunts have had ovarian cancer, and it might not be a good idea to do something like that. And that's what she said, okay? I mean, frankly, with the family life that I had, I cannot imagine, or any family I've ever been seen or been friends with, I just can't imagine that well, you could have three relatives that have something that serious happen to them, and you wouldn't know about it by the time you were an adult, but whatever. And so anyway, you know, and so she says, so I, it might be a good thing that I, I don't do that. I said, oh, wow. And so then we made chit chat for a little bit. So then I started talking about the shoot. So yeah, we could go, you know, to this place. It's got, you know, this and that. And if we did this and that, the contrast itself would just say an incredible message. It'd be so much fun. And, you, you know, if you're an actress, this is a great place to act. You know, you get out of your emotions, get out anything, you you know, express whatever you want. I mean, it's an art form where you could just make anything work. And she says, okay, so how many hours do you want me for? I said, um, uh, well, uh, it's going to take a while to get there. It's going to be a bit of work to get there. I mean, uh, well, no, but how many hours did we agree to? I said, um, well, um, uh, um, so you, you, did you say you didn't want any of these photos? No, I don't need the photos. Oh. But you know what, I better go check out that venue again because, you know, I don't want to set this all up and find that it's since the year since I've been there, it's all changed or something. So let me go check it out and I'll get back to you. And oh, okay. And that was that. Sometimes it's just really hard to shake yourself free of a paradigm, you know.